Well, how y'all are? This is your buddy George Jones over here at the... Well, actually, this is First Sergeant George R. Jones, Jones George R., of the 14th Armored Division, reenacted. What we're going to talk about today, boys and girls, is blanks. How to use them, how they work, what kinds are available, and how not to kill each other with them. The first rule of modern military reenacting is you don't really want to kill them because if you kill them, they don't come out next week. <laughs> That's the way it goes. So we got the old, first of all, we got the old trusty M1 rifle right here. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to shoot a blank out of it and see how it shoots. If I can find me a 30 odd 6 blank someplace. Now, once again, I began a video and I'm not prepared. So let's get a blank out of here. Let's get one of these. I'm going to talk about these in a few minutes. I'm not sure where these came from, but they are a factory-made blank ammunition. I think they're intended to be a grenade launcher blank, and they are identifiable by the six-point crimp, which an American grenade launcher blank has four-point crimps. If you see a four-point crimp on a blank, do not put it in a rifle because it is much more powerful than a standard training blank or a standard theatrical blank. Now, I don't know the origin of this blank. It has a red lacquer tip on the end of it, and it's color-coded by a silver crimped area. And the base of it says FA-67 match. So it's made out of a live cartridge case that's been reloaded and done this way. So I don't know where the origin of these came from, who made them, if they're a military blank, if they're a, you know, whatever they are, but I've seen them for sale around and I find them to be very hot. So what happens if you shoot a semi-automatic rifle or full automatic rifle for that matter? With a blank in it, it's not blank adapted. Well, let's find out. Put one in there right quick. And depress the old thing there and not get our thumb mixed up in it. And see what happens. Pretty loud. But it didn't cycle. So, how are we going to get it to cycle? Well... In order to get it to cycle, what happens when you fire a live round, when you fire a live round, the pressure behind that bullet builds up. As that bullet goes down, the pressure is vented off somewhere before the bullet leaves the barrel and is returned to the action, whatever that action is. Gas operated, recoil operated, however it works, that gas pressure and blowback is returned to the action of the weapon to cycle it. Without any obstruction and nothing holding that pressure back, this simply won't occur. So we have to figure out some way to get some of our pressure retained so we can do it. One way to do it is with this. I call this the killer because this is dangerous. I'm going to tell you right up front. So I'm going to install the World War II GI blank adapter for the M1 rifle on my M1. And the way that works is, first thing we do is we take a gas cylinder plug out of it. Now this is a tappet plug designed for use with a grenade launcher, but it'll work as a regular, as a regular gas cylinder plug. So what makes it special is is this. It has a gas relief in it. See that? That valve? So what happens is the grenade launcher stud fits in there and the recoil from the grenade that's being fired opens that gas valve and allows a little bit of gas to escape. But if you're not using a grenade launcher, 
it's of no consequence. All right. Remove our gas cylinder ring, which is this piece, and replace it with this. Screw that down on there as far as it'll go. And then replace the gas cylinder plug. Screw it into the gas cylinder. Now where are you at? Well, you're probably not in the place you want to be. What you've done is that tube is on there. The only thing holding this on there is this. Just a little bit of contact surface between this dog knot and that shoulder. That's the only thing that's holding that together. Does it work? Well, most experienced reenactors will tell you, yes, it works. So let's try some blank ammunition. We can find, root around over here and find us a cotton picking loaded clip. I had a loaded clip. Or I don't have a loaded clip. <sighs> or oh, I've got a loaded clip right here. These are what's called a Swanson blank. It comes from a company called Joe Swanson's Movie Blanks. Looks like that right there. Nice little crimp in the end of it. These are also made from live cartridge cases. I'll load that guy in there. I want to shoot those right away. No, I'd really rather not. Let's do something else. Let's find a different blank. What kind of blank we want to use? We don't have a blank we want to use in here. I have so many blanks and I don't want to show any of them. Oh, hell, let's just shoot, shoot some of these. This is a... <laughs> I was prepared today. Oh, I was prepared today. These are red tips. M1909 GI blanks. We're going to talk more about them later. Let's try it and see how it works. Okay. That's mirror plugs, mufflers on. Blanks, real blanks are just as loud as a live round. So, you know. came back up. Still on there? I'm surprised. It's no, it's down. Oh. There you go. Oh, that didn't feel good. <laughs> life in life in the world of blanks. So, it stayed on, but sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it just does not stay on. Uh, after you shoot it a while, this loosens up and this loosens up, okay? This backs off a little bit, gives that a little slack, and it can blow that off of there, okay? So, that's a problem. I don't like these at all. What I do like is a different style of blank adapter. Now, 
I'm going to say this, probably against my better judgment, but it's hot, nice and hot. There's a different style of blank adapter. And this is the one that I use on the M1 all the time. And that's my dollars down there. Oh. This is the one I use all the time on the M1 is this blank adapter right here. This blank adapter came from a gun rental house in California. And they went out of business and sold off all their stuff. And there was hundreds and hundreds of these in the deal. And they hit the market a few years ago. This is commonly referred to as a combat blank adapter because it is the style of blank adapter that is seen in use on the TV show Combat from the 1960s, which is on one of the entertainment networks now. And the way this guy works is... It screws on there, just like your eight ring. And then your gas cylinder plug goes back in there just like it normally would. And then you take your takedown tool and screw that in there until it's good and tight. And tighten it down pretty good, but don't strip the threads, but tighten it down pretty good. Then, you can come up there and get some good hot GI red tips, M1909 blanks. And maybe get it loaded. Okay. Let's see how that works. That works nice, doesn't it? Yes, sir. Ugh. That works nice. Now, they haven't manufactured uh, 1909 blanks since 1967. Um, and they continued to manufacture them through the end of World War II because there were so many 30 caliber machine guns still in service around the world with countries that were supported by the United States. Uh, Belgium and South Vietnam and, 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 uh, and Italy and France and so forth. And a lot of the NATO countries continued to use the 30 caliber ammunition, you know, well past the NATO standard of 7.62 by 51. But they are starting to dry up. Uh, so you see other things out there. The Swanson blank, for instance. But I stumbled across a bunch of them in cartons of these guys. This is a steel 1909, manufactured in the 1940s, manufactured during World War II. Now, they didn't manufacture steel case M2 ball ammunition because it didn't expand and contract in the firing cycle like like um, brass wood, and it was unserviceable for loaded 30 caliber ammunition. But as blank ammunition, it worked pretty good, so they manufactured quite a bit of blank training ammunition out of, out of steel, and they all have this gold look to them. You know, they're red tip, and they have this goldish appearance to the, uh, to the metal, and of course have the signature uh, red lacquered wad in the end of it. Now, there's some other blanks. These are Israeli. Israeli manufactured 30 caliber machine gun blanks and they're signified by the green tip on the end of them 
and the head stamp, which is IMI 3632, okay? These are not for shooting out of anything except a Browning automatic rifle or a 30 caliber machine gun. Um, on a bolt action or an M1, the mouth, the crimp, expands into the bore and sticks the case in the chamber. So these are not good for that. But they're okay for a BAR. BAR's got a long, long uh, chamber throat on it, you know, and they work fine in a BAR. They work beautifully in a 1919 semi-automatic. They make a semi-automatic run better, you know, than anything else. A semi-automatic 1919 runs really good with these if you can get them. Okay. Uh, you can reload your own. These work pretty good. Uh, me and another fella, we reloaded these ourselves. Uh, you can get a crimper from CH4D Tool in Ohio, and they're on the web. And uh, call them up and say, look, I'd, have, I'd like to have a crimper for 30 odd 6 308 case. You know, and you can get that crimper and resize these guys and, and work out a powder loading for them and, and start rolling your own. You know, you can do that. That's perfectly acceptable, just being careful what you're do doing. Uh, blank adapter. The, uh, the next best blank adapter for having an M1 rifle is the one from Atlantic Wall Blanks, which looks like this guy, but it's threaded on the end, and you can put different orifices in it. You can take different set screws with relief holes drilled in them and, and change it for whatever kind of blank you're using. Uh, they're pretty safe to use. Uh, that would be the next thing to have. Now, let's talk about Mausers. Mausers. Mausers don't have to have a blank adapter because they're a bolt-action rifle. 1903 Springfields and 03 A3s and P17s and Carcanos and Mausers and, you know, everything else, and, you know, uh, infields and so forth don't have to have blank adapter because you can just bolt it in there. This particular Mauser is a convert to 308, which makes it a little bit easier. Now, you see, this is a Radway Green from England. Okay, and it has on the head stamp, oh, um, I ain't got my glasses, but this is a Radway green. You can see these, it's a 308 blank, and it's got a four-point crimp and green lacquer on the end of it, Radway green. There are millions of them around, okay? Uh, you also see these guys that have been run up into an eight millimeter resizing die. So you can shoot them in an eight millimeter Mauser. Now what happens is when you do that, they almost always split, but they will fit in there and they will fire. And that's what a reenactor wants. Fits in there and fires, goes bang and ejects. Okay. So if you don't mind scoring the inside of your chamber, you got an old beater or reenactor grade Mauser. You know, and you don't mind scuffing up the chamber a little bit, you're, you're good to go. And on the Mauser, you can feed anything into it that fits. This is a PPU blank. We'd be partisan manufactured. You know. You stick it in there, bolt it in there, and away you go. No big problem. Boom. Boom, shakalaka, check the fire, rebolt, and boom, shakalaka. Doesn't sound good, does it? Okay. That in there. Boom, shakalaka. That's kind of a light one. This one will be a little louder. You know, you get all kinds of blanks for them. Make all kinds of different noise. 
How safe is it to be close to someone and shoot a blank? I haven't known anybody get hurt with a blank because people respect them in reenacting and are careful. 25 yards or closer, you shoot at the ground. 10, 15 yards, just look at him and go bang. And he'll take the hit and take his helmet off and go on about his business. Okay? Pretty simple. Now, rookie reenactors have been getting in trouble a little bit because they can't tell the difference between this and this. What is this and this, you ask? Well, I'll have to go into that in more detail. This, I can get it open. That ain't even open. Open, open, says me. This is this. See that? Blue plastic has a bullet on it. Then there's this, same manufacturer, same country of origin, is this, gray plastic has a bullet on it. People have confused these for being both of them blanks, okay? Well, let's look at it. Blue plastic. Doesn't look like a blank cartridge is fired at all, does it? All right, let's try this one. Looks like it's still got the end on it, don't it? Because it's split out there at the end. This is a blank. This is not. This is a blank. This is a plastic bullet training round that can kill a man out to about a hundred yards. Don't get confused. Remember the first rule of reenacting? You don't really want to kill them. Okay, just because you can't read the lettering on that box is not an excuse to fire this at another human being. The 5.56 five, ones of this are red. Okay? This is a blank. How can we tell it's a blank? <coughs> well, it has a scoring on the end of the false bullet, like a crimp that splits right there. And it functions as a blank. Do not make the mistake. You wind up hurting somebody. But not somebody's eye, you know. Hey, George. Yes. Can I ask you a question. Yes. Could you talk a little bit about wood bullet blanks and shredders? I'm working on it here. I just wonder if you're going to do that or not. I didn't <laughs> see any here because I, I I find that subject kind of fascinating. So this type of ammunition replaced wooden bullet blank ammunition in Europe. American blank ammunition always had some kind of a cramp in it. 
The Europeans would take a live round, load it, and put a wooden bullet on the end of it, and then at the end of the barrel would be some kind of disrupting mechanism which would disintegrate that wooden bullet. Now, in World War II, when times got really hard in Germany and Japan, they started shooting their wooden bullet training ammunition in combat. This is where the myth of the wooden bullet comes from. But, you know, you know, for wooden bullet ammunition is pretty well dried up off of the European American market, but you occasionally see it. A friend of ours just bought 17,000 rounds of it the other day in 6.5 by 55. Uh, and they've been out there shooting it a little bit, you know, but the shredder is on the end of the gun and it's on there with safety wire to make sure it stays. Uh, <coughs> and wooden bullet like this stuff is dangerous out to about 100 yards if there's no obstruction, nothing to catch it. Okay. We've talked about a lot of different blanks. Here's some hurting burgers. We'll shoot a few of those right quick. They're pretty good 308 blanks and you can pick them up. Um, I don't do German impression reenacting, but I keep a gun around just in case. I keep this Mauser around in, um, you know, I was over at uh, Bowling Green the other day and uh, I had this in the gun rack of the truck. And why would I do that? Well, you carry a spare gun. I always go reenacting with a spare gun. Uh, we were at the place called Wendell Ford one year. There was five of us. And everybody's gun was down by halfway through the event, except mine. And if I'd have had old uh, Heinrich here with me, you know, it would have been a lot of help. You know, at least it had something to have shot. So now when I go to an event, I carry at least one extra gun, you know, generally a Mauser. Um, sometimes I'll take a carbine, whether it's a blank adapted or not, because you can just cycle it pretty easy, you know. All right, then, that's about the size of it for this installment on blanks, blank ammunition, and safety issues. Um, if you'd like to get into reenacting, uh, East Quad 540 at Gmail, just drop me a line. I'll hook you up. Find a unit for you to go to that's in your area, or you can come with us. All you got to do is uniform yourself, patch up, and show up. All right, then. Like, date, share, pie, commentate, and subscribe. <coughs> Keep coughing from all them smoke grenades yesterday. And uh, God bless America, and we'll leave the light on for you. We'll see you now.